Um, we're going to start with a little bit of breath work. Um, my key is that if I'm standing or if I'm seated, I have more or less the same posture. So when I'm standing, my feet are just a little wider than my shoulders. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Wider than your shoulders. I might uh, mute people just because in the beginning it, um, yeah. it'll interfere with our editing. So everyone, you'll be free to un unmute later on. Okay, I'm just going to mute you all while we're doing this. Um, and if anybody has a real burning question, no one's permanently muted. You can unmute, but this way the recording will be easier to follow later on. Okay, so my feet are just a little wider than my shoulders, okay? And I can shift my weight, but I'm not so far out there that I'm really working these muscles. This is not an exercise like a squat would be, so don't don't work your hips too hard. And then if I was going to be seated, I'm going to, I would have my knees open just the same way, so it's the same posture. I'm going to begin standing, and then we'll move to a seated exercise soon after this. Anyone's free to change, anyone gets tired of one position or another, just move it around. There's nothing very specific, like you can only do the standing or you can only do the seated, okay? So we're gonna start with a lengthening breath. That means your stomach's gonna go back and down. You're gonna get taller, or longer. You're gonna engage these muscles back here. I'm very fond of saying this is kind of the opposite of the breath that you would do at a yoga class or in a Tai Chi class, most other situations where you're breathing, your stomach comes out and it relaxes. That's a regular di diaphragmatic breath. That's the normal physiological breath you would do when you're walking down the street. We're using the lengthening breath because it strengthens this musculature, it enhances your posture, and it improves your ability to communicate because now you're gonna move and uh, you're gonna move the air, you're gonna speak towards someone's ears where oftentimes we tend to get a little bit forward leaning and we end up pointing the sound a little farther down. So let's go ahead and we'll practice that. The dual lengthening breath, I put my thumbs onto my ribs, I put my fingers onto my stomach, and I don't push, but I gently feel my stomach going back and down as I get longer and taller. I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling, and I bring my hands together like that just to make a stretch a little bit more prominent. So let's do one where I'm not talking. Here we go, inhale. And let's try that again. Put your fingers in position, inhale. Now if you want to make a little more effort out of it, when you're exhaling, pretend you're blowing out candles from a distance. You're Pursed lips, tight cheeks, you don't puff them out like, we don't want to look like Dizzy Gillespie or anything like that, and you're just going to use that to give you a little more effort on the way out. So we're getting the effort on the way in by inhaling through our nose, and now we exhale on the way out. Try it again. One more time. Good. That's the basic lengthening breath. If you were seated, it wouldn't be any different. You would just, same situation. I'm going to change my background a little bit. We're going to do a basic variation of this exercise. Let me just check, make sure everybody's in here. Everybody trying to get in? Nope. Good. Okay. So I have a clock face now behind me. And what we're going to do is use that to draw me, um, into different positions so I can see myself a little bit better. So first thing I'm going to do is align this chair just a tiny bit. There we go. And um, essentially, I'm going to start with three and nine. And when I do this exercise, I call it open and close. And when I'm opening my hands, I spread those fingers. And when I close those hands, I bring them all the way back to the center and make sure you get nice tight fists. Quite frequently, people work on the, making the big movements, the, the LSVT big or the PWR, and they make this big movement out here. Make sure when you're coming back, you come to the all the way closed position so we really get the full range of motion, all the way open, all the way closed, okay? It's a calibration mechanism here. So let's start with three and nine. Inhale through your nose. Exhale. Try it again. Good. 
Good. Now let's bring one elbow up. I don't care which one first, and it'll be like 11 and 5 or thereabouts. Good. Make sure you come to nice, tight, closed fist. Do that again. Beg your pardon. I see someone coming in here, so let me just, I should have typed the mouse over here. And there we go. Now, now let's do the same one again, 11 and 5. You're going to feel that stretch along this muscle as you come in here, and now you're going to bring the other elbow up. So now it's one and seven. Ready? Looking real good. Let's try that again. One more here. Really feel that stretch along here. Good. Now we're gonna bring them up to like 10 and two, like we're driving a big steering wheel, ready? It's okay if it looks more like 11 and one, we're just bringing our arms up. Good. Sometimes when I do this one, I pretend like I got something heavy here. Lengthening breath all the way up there. And that really, just the visualization of that really helps me feel that a little bit more. Um, sometimes I teach a class where I have a, like a, a rubber band or, or, or a strap here, and I'll do that without me standing on it. It'll be the same kind of movement like that, and it'll just help add resistance there. Visualization is actually very powerful. It works very well for this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's try now eight and four, okay? Inhale with nice tight fist here. Take your time. And it's okay if you're not quite exactly on eight and four. It's just there to cue us a little bit. Good. Let's take a moment here now, reset a little bit. Now we're going to try something where we have one hand out at nine. We'll bring the other one up to move all our spatially challenged to like one. Okay, so they start here. We inhale. Then exhale with resistance. Blow out those candles. Try it again. Okay, so the analog of that, the reverse mirror image would be three and eleven. Okay, so we'll do an start in the middle and we'll come to three eleven. Ready? It's really two fifty five if I wanted to be about the clock, but that's not what this is about today. Now, most people, their Parkinson's starts on one side, and then over the course of time, it progresses at whatever speed that is. Some people it's faster, some people it's slower, some people you can't really perceive it very much, but eventually it becomes bilateral. And that means on one side, you'll have more weakness, more issues, and the other side will be the good side, the stronger side. And even if you have it on both sides, the side where it began will be the weaker side. So let's try it again now and see if you can feel it. Whichever side your Parkinson started on, you'll see a, 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 an asymmetry here. Let's try it. Now switch it to the 11 and 3, so it's going to be this and that. Okay, here we go. When you're doing an activity like this, where we do it on one side and then we mirror it on the other side, that's a really good opportunity to feel the difference and say, oh, this is my good side is the cue for the side that needs help. And you use the good side to say, this is as good as I can do it on the side that's not impaired. Okay, now can I do it that well on the side that has had some more problems? Okay, and you use that as a model. Let's do just a couple more of these and we better jump into some voice stuff. We might go a little bit over anyways, but I don't want to kill us with that. So let's try nine and five. <laughs> My wife used that in a, in, a, in a dance class today, that song from Dolly Parton. Let's do nine to five, ready? Well, try it again. Okay, now three and seven. Okay, see if you can make it without having to preset. I'm saying that to me as, as much as I'm saying it to you. Sometimes I get a little confused on these. Okay, 
What if you did um, maybe one in ten? Let's see what that looks like. Okay, one in ten. Woo! Not as good as I was hoping. I'll, I'll do better next time. One in ten again. Okay. How about seven and four? Okay. It's hard to manage that sometimes. A little confusing. Seven and four. Good. Good. That's probably a good place to stop. It's time to work on our voice a little bit, but we'll come back to that. And I usually use a clock face for part of it, just because we can do fun stuff. We can move a couple hours ahead, or we can do some math with it. So now an opportunity for everyone to get a little bit of water. Um, we're going to do some humming and some voice work. I'm happy to hear everyone's voice. It helps sometimes for me to understand how people are doing. So if you want to unmute, please do. You have no, no one's forced to, obviously, but you're welcome to. And what I'm going to do with the voice is use uh, humming first as a way of giving the voice without really getting any tension. And then eventually we'll do some glides, okay? Now the key with humming, let me get this mouse up here before I step on it. Um, the key with humming is that it's a great way to produce voicing without tension. Because, you know, you hear a lot of cues to be louder. Sometimes you hear cues to shout or yell, which I don't like because that usually means tension. I'm fighting, I'm, I'm in a gym, ba -dum -dum. one, two, one. I don't want that. I want uh, a clean sound where you get a lot of air through and that gives you a nice clean way to, uh, to make the sound so you can scale it up very easily without damaging the vocal folds. These muscles are really tiny. If you need more power, I'm going to encourage you to use more air. So we're hum through our nose, uh, hum, hum through our first lips here. We're going to go in through our, our nose here. And Reach in hum. through your nose. Hum. You could add a little more to that. You may be a little bit a little stronger. The, basically, the humming is the loud ah, ha, with your mouth closed. Hum. Same, same volume, same effort, no tension, but I want that sound. Let's try it again together. We're just humming. Ready? Hum. So the key again is we have air coming through. We have that nice upright posture. We're doing our lengthening breaths. We're nice and up there. And I'm actually using a nice big power pose, kind of like that. It kind of keeps you more upright. I feel like Superman. And now we're just pushing air through. We get a nice clean sound. To extend that, now we're going to use parted lips. So you're just going to have your lips open a little bit. Ooh, and we're going to focus on the vibration of the lips. Okay, before it was here, and it is still going to be here, the voice box, the vocal folds. But we're going to make it more buzzy by adding the lips in there. So let's try it together. In through your nose. done. If you run out of breath before we're done, that's okay. Just take another breath and jump in. Don't fight to the bitter end and squeeze out every last little bit of air because that'll make you tighten up here, okay? Let's try it again. Same thing. Parted lips. Here we go. <laughs> Nice 
nicely done. And I hear some different pitches. That's great. Not everyone should try to match me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 50 year old guy. So if you're not a man, you might have a different pitch. If you're not the same height or age or whatever weight as I am, so everyone's fine to find their own pitches. It's not we're not we're not having a choir here. It's okay if we don't harmonize. Okay, for the last one of these now, we're going to do rounded lips. So it's going to be a little bit more as we had before with the <laughs> Now it's going to be <laughs> And the key with that is it, it has a buzziness that's hard to sometimes transmit. But when I bring it up and down, <laughs> you can hear... You can hear that buzziness. That's the kind of the sound we're looking for. We're trying to actually play with the physics and get a good sound. We're going to hold that one for as long as we can before we start moving around with pitch gloves. So in through your nose, rounded lips. Here we go. <laughs> Um, and I hear that, but ho oh, is really good. See if you can make it ho. Oh, oh. Can you hear the difference when I have my? Yeah, you make it buzzier. Whoa. That sounds good too, right there. Whoever's doing that one, nice. Um, the key is that we're trying to um, we're trying to get the most sound with the least amount of effort. And then when we more sound, we just turn up the air so we can scale this up. If we're in a noisy restaurant, I can talk louder just by using more air and I'm not shouting. And I could do this for a heck of a long time if I had to, or if I was in a choir. And if I'm not in that environment, I can scale it down by just not adding as much air. That's the key with this: is not to feel like you got to fight or you got to build these muscles and you got to really duke it out. That's not what we're shooting for. So we're going to take that sound and we're going to use it now for what are called glides. In, in speech world, a glide is when you go from a low note to a high note or the other way around, a high note to a low note. We're going to use a, a target word here, whoop, whoop, because it, it, it really helps with that sound. And then when you have the P part, the boop part of it, that will, will help you kind of cut off at the top. So the key with this is that we're going to go from the very lowest note you can produce all the way up to the top note and it's be a lot higher than you expect especially some of the guys i'm going to go way into falsetto and uh let me just demo one and we'll do some together watch what i do with my hands too is an extra part of the movement here <laughs> way higher okay let's do it together ready very good, very good. Let's try it again. Good, good. For people who are having a hard time getting into false settle, it's almost always you got to move a little faster to bottom. You can't go. You got to go. Okay, let's do one more time, all of us together, to give us your best effort. Here we go. Ready? Look. Good, good. Okay, now, we're going to go the other direction. This is a high note to a low note. The word we're going to use is boo. And uh, you're going to start all the way in falsetto, all the way down low. And you'll see when I get to the lower parts of I open it up to an ah, and that's just to keep the tension out. Sometimes you go ooh, you sound like you're getting strangled. We don't want that. So you go ooh. Okay, so the movement will be bring your arms up as we inhale, lengthening breath. So you're, and then we're gonna do the. Yeah, actually, let's do it like that. Let's do it nice and long and slow like that. That'll be harder. Slower is actually harder. Let's do it together. Ready? Open that mouth, too. Ah, gives you more sound. The difference between ha 
mouth. It's just it's just your mouth. It's just how much how much you're getting in your way or staying out of your way. Let's try another one just like that. Big breath through your nose. I'm hearing a little string leak, so don't, don't, ah, uh, if you're hearing anything that sounds like you're getting strangled up here, you're tightening up, then I want it more like, it's more like I'm, I'm yawning, I'm like, ha, ah. okay, adding more air makes it easy to do that, let's try it one more time, let's all yawn, ha, ah. very good, very good, nice work, okay, so now I'm going to move into the, what I call the power exercises, which is, not related to uh, Becky Farley. Now I say that I shouldn't call them power exercises. That's what they are in the land of uh, basically vocal function exercises. But what we're going to do is uh, make a sound. We got one hand on top. My left hand on top is the ah. And then we have the other one on top. The right hand on top is the o. Oh, and then side by side is the e. And so what happens when I'm quiet, it'll be hmm. Ah, 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 ah. This is a barometer for how loud I am, but it's also a nice movement and it's a nice stretch. The one thing I say when I'm doing the E is make sure that you're using a nasal sound with the E sound. Don't fight. Don't make it more like hey, 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 so you can add more air to make it louder, not tighten up. Okay, so let's try it together. Follow along with me. Here we go. Hum. So now for the last part of this, I want to go into an exercise where we're counting up and down some numbers on one breath. I introduced an early version of this last week, so I'm going to review that one slide just so you can see it, and then we'll go into the video part of it. Okay, I'm just going to, you can hear it, I need a little bit of water. If anyone hasn't hydrated recently, mm -hmm. it's always good to do that. I know it's hard to talk people into like, you should be drinking a lot more water because I know people don't look for new ways to find uh, other opportunities to go to the bathroom all day. But um, even if you just drank a full, regular, normal glass of water, not this, with every time you took your meds, that would help improve your hydration and it wouldn't be quite so burdensome as trying to say, drink three of these a day, but you should drink three of these a day. Okay, I'm, I'm, my lecture's over here. Let me show you the exercise. Um, the key for this, is that I want you to go all the way down here, count one to 10, and we'll come back starting with nine, go all the way back to zero, so that it gives us 20 total, but I want you to do it on one breath. And this is a nice one, this is especially where I would use this app, if you have it here handy, to see if you can do it loud enough so that you have a nice green ball or you're in that 70-ish range if you're using one with a meter that's tuned to the factory. And um, Again, we'll try one of these together, and then I'll show you the variation that I'm looking for. Okay, so you go in through your nose, nice big breath. We're just going to count all the way up and all the way back down. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, 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 eight, it should be pretty doable over time, but if you're a little bit out of shape or maybe you haven't tried it for a while, 
that's it's worth working on. Now, what I really want to do today is I want to go up on one um, and down on another. So we would start with. Um, did I not put this in here? I put the slide in here and just play with it. There it is. Okay, I start by going up by fours and I come back by fives. Or I start going going on threes and coming back by fours. Or the one I'm really looking for is always at the top here, I bet. Sometimes Zoom this does this to you. You start by ones, you go up to one to 10 and you come back 20 to zero by twos. Okay, so you're still doing 10 repetitions. It's a little more cognitive load. I will have it written down every time, so don't expect me, I'm not expecting anyone to be a math genius. Cheat if you have to, you might see me looking over at the side, it's okay. So let's try it all together. Ready? Here we go, in through your nose. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty